Hello, I'm Trey Zipper with By Memorial Day, where we've made it our mission to clean every veteran headstone in America by Memorial Day. In this video, I'm going to share with you the different types of veteran grave markers provided by the Veterans Affairs Department, the National Cemetery Administration. This was a, a great opportunity to show you kind of what's happened in America. Uh, I, we'll, we'll go to a national cemetery here uh, later in the segment. But uh, this, this is the iconic white marble veteran headstone that you see at every national cemetery, including Arlington. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncover this uh, to show you uh, the dimensions of what these stones look like, where when you see them upright in a national cemetery, well-maintained, uh, it's kind of hard to get perspective of, of what the stone really looks like. So let's expose this stone. We cleaned this up a few weeks ago, so uh, it was uh, completely underground. So today all I have to do is get this bit of leaves swept off of it. The dirt has uh, encroached back a bit on the stone but you can see that it's, it's not supposed to be this way. I hope you'll agree that we need to do something about this by Memorial Day. We've got about four weeks to get this done. No reason why this stone should be laying on its back, buried in dirt and grass and weeds and leaves. It's just wrong. So this is what, a, this is what the actual monuments look like you'll see at the National Cemeteries about this much of the stone is below ground. So I've we'll, got a tape measure here, get an idea of the dimensions of these stones. 42 inches long, 13 inches wide. Um, I'll show you in another uh, stone that's upright right now. This is uh, obviously I can't show you the thickness, but these stones are four inches thick. So this is uh, your iconic white marble upright veteran headstone again what you see in all the national cemeteries and let's do something about these stones let's get them clean let's get them standing up the way they need to be it's called resetting a stone these are very heavy so you need to know what you're doing and have the right equipment to do it but uh, we're going to stop by a national cemetery later in this video and show you just how deep this stone is supposed to be set in the ground on to the next headstone provided by the veterans affairs department The first veteran grave markers were made of wood. Obviously, the life expectancy of a wooden marker was only a few years. So in 1873, the first Civil War type white marble headstones were approved. They were narrower and shorter than the stones we see today, but the design was timeless. Like this Union soldier's veteran headstone, they were four inches thick with this slight curve across the top, Notice the sunken shield with the raised lettering known as Bass Relief. As you can see, the Christian cross was not included on the first veteran headstones. Notice the birth date and death date are not included in the design. In addition to marking the veteran graves of Union soldiers and sailors, this same design with the sunken shield was used for veterans who had served in the American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Indian Wars, the Mexican War, and the Spanish-American War. A big change happened in 1906 when Congress authorized veteran headstones for Confederate soldiers and sailors. Notice the sunken shield has been removed, and notice the curve at the top has been replaced with a point. It's said the pointed top was designed to keep Yankees from sitting on them. This Confederate headstone marks the grave of Captain Benjamin F. Wood, Company H of the 5th Florida Infantry Regiment. Captain Wood fought at the battles of 2nd Manassas, Antietam, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, and Gettysburg. All five of these most famous of American battles are now National Battlefield Parks. At Gettysburg on July the 3rd, 1863, Captain Benjamin Wood led his company of Florida men out of the tree line along Seminary Ridge and into immortality on the right flank of what will forever be known as Pickett's Charge. 
During that doomed attempt to break the Union Center upon Cemetery Ridge, Captain Wood took a mini ball through his left thigh, resulting in his capture and subsequent two years of captivity as a prisoner of war at Union POW Camp Johnson Island on Lake Erie near Sandusky, Ohio. Following the end of World War I, also known as the Great War or the War to End All Wars, General John Joseph Black Jack Pershing helped design an improved general veteran headstone. The dimensions were increased to 42 inches high by 13 inches wide by four inches thick. Remember the dimensions of the stone we measured at the beginning of this video? How much you wanna bet the 13 inches represents the original 13 colonies? Did you know the American flags that cover flag draped veteran coffins are folded 13 times? Like the Confederate headstone, the sunken shield was deleted. On the face of the stone were etched the veteran's name, state, rank, military unit, and date of death. It wasn't until 1944 that World War I was authorized to be etched onto veteran headstones. So for World War I veterans who died between 1918 and 1943, you will not find World War I etched on those veterans' headstones. Now, let's zoom in on the cross at the top of Corporal Frank Tippin's veteran headstone. The new general design, post-World War I, was the first time a religious emblem was offered. There were two religious emblems available, a Christian Latin cross or a Hebrew Star of David. In 1930, the Southern Cross of Honor was authorized by the War Department to be inscribed at the top of each Confederate headstone. The Southern Cross of Honor was designed in 1899 by the Daughters of the Confederacy as a medal to be worn by Confederate veterans. Because some cemeteries only allow ground level grave markers, this white marble veteran grave marker design was approved in 1936. It measures 24 inches wide by 12 inches and has a thickness of four inches. Pay particular attention to the size, shape, font type, military rank, and unit information, as well as this Christian cross. Once you see a few of these, you'll be able to spot them from a distance in cemeteries you visit. On this particular veteran grave marker for Navy Petty Officer 3rd Class Melvin Wright Cowart, we see in memory of. This is because Melvin Cowart was killed in action during the Battle of the Atlantic. His body was never recovered when his ship the destroyer USS Jacob Jones was torpedoed and sunk off Cape May, New Jersey by German submarine U-boat 578. 138 men went to the bottom of the Atlantic. 18 men were lost at sea on life rafts and one man died after rescue. Only 11 men out of 168 survived. This type of grave marker in memory of is also known as a cenotaph. This style granite ground level veteran grave marker was approved in 1939. The dimensions are identical to the white marble ground level markers at 24 inches wide by 12 inches and four inches thick. You may ask, why granite instead of marble? Visit enough cemeteries and observe enough headstones and you'll see with your own eyes why. Granite is a much harder material as compared to marble, therefore, marble erodes at a much faster rate than granite. Polished granite deters the growth of biological organisms. This polished granite stone provided by the National Cemetery Administration marks the grave of 2nd Lieutenant Daniel Leroy Clayville Jr. from Fort Myers, Florida. A pilot in the U.S. Army Air Corps, 2nd Lieutenant Clayville was killed in action shot down by a German ME-109 in the skies over France on July the 5th, 1944, just one month after the Allied forces landed at the beaches of Normandy. This is the original style bronze veteran grave marker approved for use in 1940. It measures the same surface dimensions as the marble and granite ground level markers at 24 inches wide by 12 inches. These bronze veteran grave markers are set upon a base stone of concrete, 
marble, or in this case, granite. To me, these original style bronze markers with their patina remind me of World War II color photos of Jeeps and Army uniforms. This style of bronze marker was used for 33 years from 1940 to 1973. As I look at this grave marker, I can't even imagine that only a hundred years ago, American soldiers were pulling wagons with teams of horses in battle. The original bronze veteran grave marker was replaced with this updated design in 1973. The quality improvement is immediately obvious with the decorative beveled edge. I remember my grandmother telling me she did not want a Veterans Administration provided marker for my grandfather because her brother's bronze marker from the VA was, as she said it, cheap, cheap, cheap. I didn't understand what she meant at the time, but looking back at her brother's bronze marker now, I see that it was of the old design ordered prior to 1973. Had my grandmother known the bronze markers were updated, I think she may have been very happy with a VA furnished marker for my Navy World War II grandfather who sailed into Pearl Harbor on the first oil tanker to enter the harbor after the attack of December 7, 1941. In 1941, granite was approved as a natural material for the general design upright veteran headstone. They only used granite for six years, discontinuing its use in 1947 due to higher cost versus traditional white marble. Granite veteran headstones were reintroduced in 1994. The physical benefits of granite were described earlier, but you have to admit this granite headstone marking the grave of Vietnam veteran William A. Long is handsome. Notice the smooth rounded edges and the contrast of the black lettering against the gray stone. I have to say this is one of the finest veteran headstones I've ever seen. In 1944, the date of birth and war period were added to veteran headstones. So you see them both on this general design veteran headstone from 1955. Airman second class James Russell Holman was killed in a car crash in Roswell, New Mexico probably while serving at Area 51 after his tour of duty in Korea, the Forgotten War. When we found this veteran headstone, it too was forgotten, covered in black algae, dirt, and bird droppings. In many cemeteries, these veteran headstones are never allowed to be cleaned because the cemeteries have illogical, self-imposed rules whereby only family members are allowed to clean headstones. Let me tell you something about Korean War veteran James Russell Holman. His parents died 50 years ago. He had no siblings. He never married. He had no children. He does not show up on any family tree online. Tell me, who will clean his veteran headstone? And finally, this is how a veteran headstone looks today. As you can see here, lines of personal text are now allowed. 15 characters per line, up to four lines. Here we see bronze star and Bible verse John 3:16. The stone is four inches thick and 13 inches wide. This stone stands 24 inches tall, meaning 18 inches of the 42 inch slab of marble are set below ground. This stone is level and plumb. If you've not been to the National Cemetery near you, I encourage you to make the effort. Why is it that veteran headstones in national cemeteries look like this? While the veteran headstones entrusted to the care of 330 million Americans in their local communities look like this. These stones mark sacred ground. They are hard evidence reminding us of the true cost of freedom. The headline read, Wreckage Located, Bradenton Man Aboard Plane Down in Libya. The wreckage of a U.S. plane with 10 American servicemen aboard has been sighted in Libya. A U.S. search plane found the wreckage 75 miles south of the Libyan port of Benghazi. A spokesman said there was no sign of life. In Washington, the Army said, Among the 10 men aboard the missing plane was Specialist Henry A. Harvey, son of Mrs. Elsie C. Harvey, Bradenton, Florida. Now that you know what they look like, 
I hope you will do your part to make sure these veteran grave markers are cleaned properly once each year by Memorial Day. Volunteer to clean a veteran headstone, make a donation to this patriotic cause, or organize a veteran headstone cleaning event at a cemetery or two in your local area. Visit bymemorialday.com where you'll find information, how-to videos, an address to mail a check, a link to give via gofundme.com, a link to the National Cemetery Administration's website where they've posted the new protocol for cleaning veteran grave markers in private and municipal cemeteries like this. Share this video with a friend and let's make sure every veteran headstone in America is cleaned by Memorial Day.